episode of Girl Influence Power is brought to you by Collectin. Shop or run the world's tiniest boutiques with Collectin. Welcome to Girl Influence Power Podcast. I'm your host, Nadia Lee, entrepreneur, jewelry designer, CEO, co-founder of Collectin, an app that lets you shop influencer and designer labels direct from the source. Thank you for tuning in live on CastBox. This episode is brought to you by Collectin, shop the world's tiniest boutique in partnership with CastBox. So today, my guest is the creative and successful entrepreneur and author, Heidi Luera. Heidi is the CEO and founder of Raw Natural Born Artist, a production company that produces over 70 showcases each year around the globe, bringing together new and upcoming artists from fashion, music, and art. It's, it's a mission to provide the tools, education, resources, and exposure to independent artists. Welcome, yes. Heidi. Thanks so much <laughs> for having me. And don't forget, she has a new book out. It's called The Work of Art. Yes. And it's really a field guide for all creative entrepreneurs who need a little bit of guidance on the business portion of, of yes. Yes, being an artist. <laughs> <laughs> So, Heidi, I love what you do and I love what Raw Artist does because Thank it's you. very similar to collecting and concept in that it's providing a platform and a place for content, um, like for artists, whether it's visual, mm-hmm. uh, designers, and what kind of other, other artists, yeah, <laughs> like, like we, all sorts of artists, right? Yeah, we have over, um, we have 10 creative categories that oh, we show. Oh, wow. Things. So we're really broad <laughs> okay so all sorts of artists <laughs> film fashion music art performing art hair makeup accessories photography tech and handmade craft oh wow <laughs> anything so, and everything creative so you bring them all together and yes. then that's what our raw artists do bringing them all together providing mm-hmm. them the platform so that they can get their word out there about who they are as an right. artist both okay. online and offline so oh, we have nice. an online platform mm-hmm. where they have a profile they can upload mm-hmm. photos they can have their social media links, get their SEO going. And oh, then wow. we have the showcases, mm-hmm, which we do mm-hmm. in 70 cities around the world. Okay. And we do them on a quarterly basis for mm-hmm. the most part. Okay. So, for instance, downtown LA, we have a show there mm-hmm. that happens every three months. Mm-hmm. And the showcases feature live music, fashion shows, mm-hmm. a pop up art gallery accessory vendors um handmade crafters hair mm-hmm. and makeup all all the crafts i just uh listed mm-hmm. and they're kind of simultaneously in this little circus ah, of creativity okay. in these showcases so is each showcase a different event with a different yes. name mm-hmm. so would they know it's by raw artists or yeah no? yeah so we have theme names mm-hmm, mm-hmm. per quarter right um and those help differentiate. We've oh, been running okay. for about ten years, so oh, we wow. have to <laughs> so you're very organized. Yeah, we've got we've got that part down. Okay, <laughs> but you didn't always start from this whole event production. You you had this passion for fashion, right? For clothing. Yes, yes. So tell me about that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be a fashion designer since I was very young. Mm-hmm. Since I was seven, that's like all I remember wanting to wow. be. Mm-hmm. And I used to design formal dresses mm-hmm. and was um, very much in love with that world. Okay. And had books always from mm-hmm. the library and just, you know, obsessed. <laughs> um, I grew up in a small town in Northern California. Okay. So when I was 18, I knew that the only place I needed to go and be was... Mm-hmm. Um, was Los Angeles. Right. So three months out of high school graduation, I was out of there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was, you, you are really focused. I was, <laughs> I was yes, tunnel vision right. all my way here. Oh, nice. Um, and then about a year after arriving, mm-hmm. I started my own clothing line. Oh, wow. Okay. And started trying to sell it at mm-hmm. Swap Meets because okay. it was the only place or marketplace Mm -hmm. I really knew to showcase and sell right right um and I found it really not the right demographic Mm -hmm. and I my line was specifically for young females Uh, so okay you know their moms maybe would buy it from (laughs) for them on their behalf and swap me but it wasn't really like a right the target that I wanted. Right. And I also had friends that were visual artists mm-hmm, and musicians mm-hmm. that I just found so talented. Right. And was almost like kind of pissed off yeah. that there wasn't a place <laughs> for us to showcase right. uh, our work. Right. So yeah. I took matters into my own hands. Mm-hmm. And in 2005, I started a showcase for fashion, music, and art. Mm-hmm. 
um, and it kind of organically exploded. Oh, I had wow. zero clue what I was doing. <laughs> I I had done like a couple of events in high school, right, but right. I wasn't like an events person per se. I was just very like organized mm-hmm, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of how it happened. It was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it happens for a lot of people. <laughs> right? Right, because yeah. fashion is very tough. I mean, I, I, I'm in fashion business for 20-some years before I started my own tech company. That's right. fashion-related, but mm-hmm. it's brutal out there. It is. Right, and then, and, if you, and people think that if you're just a great designer with a great product, you can get access to all oh, these no. great buyers. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right it's a it's a hustle and so that was the other thing is right. I started working in the fashion industry kind mm-hmm. of simultaneously yeah. I was working for a showroom mm-hmm. in the fashion district and at a very young age like uh-huh. I I had no business being uh-huh. there my boss made me lie about my age and tell <laughs> oh, everyone really? I was 23 I was oh. 19 <laughs> so she was like everyone thinks you're 23 okay <laughs> <I'm saying laughs> like, like you shouldn't be here you haven't even right. gone to fashion school but you're doing well so I kind of got a lot of um, hands-on experience yes, in the fashion mm-hmm. industry and the business side. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, it's so expensive and it competitive. So expen- yes. And yeah. so I wanted to go more direct to consumer. Uh, right. And create right. my own stuff and just right. sell it to the right, customer. Right. But there wasn't anything like that. Which is true. Because, LA. yeah, because when I started, it was pretty much the same thing. If you yeah. was pretty much, you just wholesale, right, to a retailer. Exactly. And that, and you're hoping that retailer would then get your word out and you become famous. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the hope. Right. The but dream. then, yeah, but you can't get access to these retailers because, well, even it's now difficult. it's even, yeah, it's difficult. Now it's even probably worse because back in the days, you would probably go to a wholesale trade show. But like you said, if you're starting out, a trade show was like it's three, four thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, three, four thousand dollars. And then how much orders do you have to write before you go? Before you even break even. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And you still have to produce the clothing line on top exactly. of that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know your struggles. Yeah. So <laughs> We've I, been in fashion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was the point was mm-hmm. really like, let's bypass all of that. Right. Not that it is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I really believe like if you are capitalized, right. if you have all of your, you know, manufacturers in place and all these people that you can trust like go do that thing like these trade shows are wonderful Mm -hmm. and you can get a ton of business but there's so many designers that are super talented that don't have those types of means Mm -hmm. yet yes and so raw um launched in 2009 so Mm -hmm. i did that show for from like 2005 Mm -hmm. to 2008 um with a partner we kind of had a brutal split yeah Mm -hmm. um and i did corporate stuff for a while and then started raw in 2009 with all of my experience and knowledge Uh from doing events and working with artists and being one myself right but that's really the concept behind it was you don't need to go full-fledged right Right, off the bat if you have something you're passionate about and you're talented and you have the ability to fulfill some orders or small Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. a small line or something yeah yeah. raw can be a platform right right because you don't have to go the standardized way and really there's no standardized way anymore not (laughs) now not with the internet (laughs) exactly everything's so flattened yeah because you want to just go direct to the consumers anyway because you want to connect yeah and talk to them and know what your products is good for or where you need to improve so that's very very important absolutely so but you got your degree from fashion uh fidm right from downtown Mm -hmm. did Mm -hmm. you put that into any good use (laughs) You know, uh, FITM was a great experience on a lot of like marketing and branding stuff. I learned a ton Mm -hmm. there. Um, I was a merchandise product development major. Oh, okay. So I, but I want to say just, I think in a lot of people can echo this, Mm -hmm. especially these days, the majority of the things that I've learned Mm -hmm. have been through hands-on experience Uh. and doing sometimes the hard way right. <laughs> like you can only learn so much from a textbook right, right. You have exactly to go out and get your hands dirty right. and like experience what it's like right and what the repercussions of your decisions are right. that's true <laughs> but that's there's very, not very a true. lot of textbooks that can teach you that <laughs> you know so what do you think is the difference between like running a fashion business versus running raw like a more, oh. more, ser- I guess it's kind of a service, right? More of a service business. Yeah, right. we are. It, it's much different having a product mm-hmm. than a service. Right. Um, 
I would say that there are tons of differences, but I think the fundamentals of business are the same. Mm -hmm. You need to know what direction you're going. You need to make sure you have a strong team. Right. You need to make sure that you have systems and processes in place. Oh, yes. Which I'm still learning how to do (laughs) the proper way. (laughs) Um, And then constantly maintaining those things. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. I think, you know, being in business for as long as we have 10 years, Mm -hmm. it is, uh, it's constantly evolving and changing. Like Mm -hmm. there's these different levels that you go to Mm -hmm. in business or go through rather Mm -hmm. in business where I feel like level one is like easy. You're excited. You're (laughs) passionate. You're Uh pushing. Um, and then you finally get past that point where you've got a little bit of traction right. mm-hmm. and then it's like level two and that's harder, right? much that's harder. Yes. And it, it's like a video game. It takes right. you a couple times mm-hmm. to pass it. Yes. And then once you've mastered that, right. you're on to level three. So it's I feel like true. it's the it's same. It's very, very true. <laughs> you know, it fundamentally, but yeah, very different right. as far right. as right. Right. running a fashion business and, you know, driving my car around. Right. And, anywhere that would give me a booth and mm-hmm. unpacking it yes <laughs> it's more managerial for mm-hmm. me now yeah. oh yeah that's true so do you enjoy the managerial day-to-day or if you you know if you could just do whatever one job in your company and right now what would you like really oh, focus that's on that's such a good question um i i'm definitely a creative entrepreneur mm-hmm. myself so right. i am i am kind of the i i had a friend that explained this Um, you're either a scalpel Mm -hmm. or a sledgehammer (laughs) and I'm more of the sledgehammer. Uh I'm more of the, let's break down barriers. Let's find new ways. Mm -hmm. Let's chart new courses. Uh, Um, so I think if I could not, uh, do any of the other stuff, I would just be like, Hey, I have this idea. I Mm want to do it. I know how to do it. I have the vision. I'm going to put the systems and process in place. Okay. Here, employee X, you yes. take care of this from now on. I'm going to go sledgeham something, right, right, sledgeham right. or something yeah. else. Because um, you're the visionary, basically. Yeah. Yes. And I so, mean, but yeah. you, you also have to have the balance of right. maintaining those things and making sure things right, are right. going, mm-hmm. you know, the right yeah. way. Which is, <laughs> I think, the hard part, the right. bigger you get, mm-hmm. too. It's yeah. like, I can't have my eye, eye on 150. Yes. Oh, you can't do everything. Have to execute today. So that's where having a strong team comes in. Right. So you do know? you have one person that you can trust to execute your vision? We have a team of 60. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> a huge team. Yeah. And we have uh, departments and department right, leaders right. and things like that. So, yeah, absolutely. We have people we can trust in each of those departments. Right, but right. it is it is still always a difficult thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think as a boss, what I sometimes struggle with is my expertise slash gut feeling uh-huh. and then also you know, listening to my team and being like, okay, who, who is, I don't want to say the word right, because right. we're never a hundred percent right, but who is the, um, how can we make this meld together between their ideas and my ideas right. and how can we, you know, yeah, take the, take the right path or because, take the right yes, path, because yeah. you want to respect your, your, your staff's right. opinions. Because Absolutely. You, yeah. But, but then you also very strong. In your I know. And I'm like, well, so it's very, I very did that already <laughs> like six years ago. Yeah. If you guys want to try it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that, I think that's the hardest, the hardest part about right, right. being a boss. Yeah. For me. No, it least. is. It is. It's that trying to find that balance, that, that yeah. perfect formula that you mm-hmm. let the creative, you know, kind of do their thing or the people that you know work for you do the thing but at the same time you want it the way you want it right I know <laughs> right I know yeah that's hard yep and I know you work with your husband I do oh how how do you manage that <laughs> we're thinking about starting a support group actually for husband and wife so right. if you guys want to join <laughs> oh that's true I, I'm a husband and wife team too there's so many there's right, so many right. because I think it is a different dynamic and it yes. creates a different dynamic right right um, right But yeah, that's we started working together before we were a couple. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I think that's what the foundation of our relationship Uh, has been built on. So Mm -hmm. it's maybe a little different, but it it has its days where it's real (laughs) difficult. Right. Are you able to draw boundaries? Like no. 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 So you talk about work even at home sometimes after work. 
A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Right. We're like, I feel like we're in a constant 24 hour <laughs> business meeting. <laughs> well, I think it's also because we're both passionate about it. Right. You right. know, no, so it's, it's like, what do yes. you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, that's like, true. That's true. Because all it just all, always comes up. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. And yeah. No, I know. It's so convenient. They're sitting right, right, right there. Right. It's I like, mean, hey, yes. we should talk about this problem. Go right, ahead. right. It's like you want to turn it off after you go go I home know. but it is very hard because it just pops up yeah in a conversation here and there totally yeah Do you so we've tried before we've tried to be like okay after we come home we're yeah. not talking and then be like so one thing we do mm-hmm. do now mm-hmm. is we'll be like is it okay to talk about business right now uh, so we like right, ask because right, right, if you're right. not in that headspace like that's i could be in that headspace but he's not yeah or vice that's versa, true and that's I'd be like, true no not right now <laughs> So do you have something you do like to turn off all that noise at the end of the day? Like if you were just like, oh, this is so stressful. I have trained myself to turn off my brain. Like, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning, I couldn't do that personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm talking like 15 years ago when I was like, it's all I could think about. Mm -hmm, I was like mm -hmm. breathing, sleeping, eating (laughs) it. Um, Yeah. But I have had to train myself because you'll drive yourself crazy. Oh, you like, will. Like you have to remember you're <laughs> yes. a human being right. and you have needs right. and you have <laughs> things, other things you need to accomplish. Right, right. You know. Yeah. And then, you, so. yeah, once you have kids, it's all different, too. Because oh my then God. there's another piece of the puzzle. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I do? I, I binge on, like, TV dramas. <laughs> sometimes hey, i'm like escape i know other people's problems <laughs> right and i was <laughs> like okay i'm like i'm gonna do like netflix for all night long <laughs> like i would tell my husband like okay once the daughter's asleep yeah. like i'm gonna be watching drama from now to 4 a.m uh-huh. and that's uh-huh. just for me to relax so like you know get a hold right. of yourself and just deal with it yeah go yeah. over there i'm gonna be busy <laughs> right and like i don't want to talk about anything else <laughs> just give me my tv <laughs> no totally i think obviously with the golden age of tv that's something that i do too it right. does help like drown it out yeah for sure. that's true but again <laughs> wine that's my other oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. that's true <laughs> but that can get really really dangerous too i know i have yeah so okay lo- like we're gonna, gonna take a quick break but okay what do you think impacts most with people that you work with is it the music is it like is it art the genre of art yeah is it mean? i mean yeah what what is it that I think it's together. different for for everyone, but um, specifically, I think what makes raw very unique mm-hmm. is that we do have all these genres of creativity mm-hmm. and one place under one roof. Right. So that's very um, that's very rare. Okay. Like you can go to an art show, mm-hmm. you can go to a fashion show, right. but it's really rare to have all of those things in one place. Right. Mm-hmm. So I want to say just, uh, I don't think there's any one specific genre. I think mm-hmm. it's the fact that they're all together okay. and collaborative. Right. Okay. So, but yeah, we have anywhere from 800 to 1,000 attendees that come to oh, our showcases. Wow. So people are very interested mm-hmm. in kind of what's going on in their backyard. Right. Okay. You know? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go on a break now for a minute and we'll be right back with Heidi and then we'll jump right into more about your current business and then to talk a little bit about your book. Sure. Sounds All right. good. <laughs> Now you can try before you buy on Collectin. Introducing Experience, the new way to shop jewelry. Flaunt your style and express your creativity with Experience. Get it today, only on Collectin. All right, we're coming back from break, talking with Heidi Luera for Raw Artist. Okay, so we're going to jump right in and talk about more about Raw. Sure. Um, so what is the biggest difference in attending a Raw event versus, like, saying, going to an art gallery or, mm-hmm. you know, smaller events? Mm-hmm. So... It's a collaboration of all of these different crafts. So you will see a pop-up art gallery. You'll see fashion shows. You'll see live music. You'll be able to shop vendors. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a bar. Open. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, cash bar. It's not an open right, bar, right, but yeah. there's a bar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can have cocktails. You can talk directly mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with the artists. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there's normally there's a dj in yeah. between every mm-hmm. set we also have what we call our live sculpture garden right, which right. is essentially our hair and makeup artists mm-hmm. because a lot of times they are not regarded as right. artists themselves mm-hmm. and they truly are um they normally have two to three models mm-hmm. that are standing on pedestals and kind of posing uh-huh. like mannequins oh, and they're very okay. cool hair and makeup right uh features so it is Unlike most showcases mm-hmm. that you've been to. Okay. And I would venture to say it's definitely not boring. Yeah. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I've gone Doesn't sound to boring, art right? showcases right. before, which are great. You mm-hmm. know, galleries are wonderful right. um, for sales and for, you know, elevating an artist's career. Right. But most of the time, unfortunately, and I'm an art lover, mm-hmm. too. Right. Mm-hmm. I will go to a gallery and I'll take a lap mm-hmm. or two. Yeah. And then I'm like, OK, oh, I'm done. <laughs> You know, right, right. and I, I really don't. And I feel like a lot of galleries are very intimidating. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I agree. You don't want to go in there. You feel like you're going to break something. Right. That's or true. Like, that's you know? very, very true. So raw is really an opportunity to bring creativity to people mm-hmm. and bring, you know, people to creativity because um. I feel like there's really not. Um, an approachable entity right. that does that, mm-hmm. you know. That's true because you're one of your first, right, to do this type of event. We, yeah, we kind of are the only. You are the only and first one that <laughs> does it like this. Right, there are right. definitely, you know, pop up art shows mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and fashion shows, right, but right. again, yeah, because it's a logistical right. puzzle. Oh, it and is. So I get <laughs> why no one else does. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So how do they know to go to you, one of your events, like? Uh, they can go to raw artists, mm-hmm. that's plural, okay. dot com. And there is a um, little, I guess, tab in right. the right hand mm-hmm. corner that says select your city. Right. We're in mm-hmm. it's over 70 cities around the world. We're all over the United mm-hmm. States, basically in every major metropolitan city you can think of. OK. We're in Australia, Canada, and we just launched in Mexico. OK. In Mexico City and Guadalajara last mm-hmm. year. Oh, well, okay. Guadalajara this year, Mexico City last year. So they can they can choose their city mm-hmm. and see what showcase we have next. Oh, okay. Um, so they can attend that way. Mm-hmm. And you can also submit your work as an artist. Mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you are a visual artist or a fashion designer right. or an accessory mm-hmm. designer, you can submit your work on our website. Mm-hmm. One of our curators will review it. Okay. And if we think it's a good fit mm-hmm. and you feel like it's a good fit for where you are right. at in your mm-hmm, career, mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. we book you in and ah, okay. make it happen. So do you usually find the local artists in that area for that yes. yeah. uh, production? Every okay. every showcase is made up of local artists from that community. Oh, okay, nice. So, and every showcase is different. Right. Oh, that's nice. So is the intent for exposure or really for the yes. artists to make money too? It's both. Yeah, okay. it's both. So the way that Raw works mm-hmm. is we don't have a traditional booth fee. Right. Like a trade show Uh or something mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that we have our artists their their skin in the game is to sell 20 tickets to the showcase so they're essentially crowdfunding Uh from their community Mm -hmm. and we lead them through the process and that is kind of intentional Mm -hmm. because it helps kind of self-educate right. on self-promotion. Right, because that's true. artists absolutely have to do that. Oh, they don't yes. realize. Yes, you do. You <laughs> have to so sell important. everything, right? Because salesmanship yeah. is actually the key to success. Absolutely. For any artist or any entrepreneur, you have to be able to sell yourself. Right. <laughs> and so your you product. have to get out of your comfort zone. Right, You're right. the expert on your work. Yes, so exactly. So that is their buy-in, and um, that's their only buy-in. They actually make money from ticket sales if they're mm-hmm. really great at self-promotion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They can make money back mm-hmm. um, from from selling over that twenty ticket uh, okay. minimum. All right, and then we take zero mm-hmm, percent commission mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. any sales mm-hmm. that they make at yeah. the showcases. So we've had artists sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work and fashion and accessories throughout the years and that's only like the small minuscule amount that we can track right because we send out a survey we're like did you sell anything tell us yeah (laughs) it's like 
a per- small percentage right, tells us. Right, so I yeah. think there's even more than oh, that. Okay. But, yeah. Is there any notable artists that came out of your one of your events? Yeah, we talk about this too. So we don't like to take credit mm-hmm. because it's not because they participate in Raw. Right, they're famous right. now. <laughs> um, but there's several. Mm-hmm. Um, Vinny Etienne, who ah. just, uh, he was on Project Runway this last oh, season. Nice. He actually launched his, his line with Raw, I think, mm-hmm. in 2014. Oh, okay. Um, um, so we were like his first official fashion show uh-huh, and uh-huh. he was just in the top 10 on Project Runway. Oh, nice. But that doesn't have anything to do with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say it's well, like one yes thing no. led to another. Yeah, right? because he has to audition, right? And then they're probably going to ask him like, what have you done? Sure. Let me show your work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he just, he works his ass off. Right. You know, yeah. well, so. Yes. Every artist, every <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> entrepreneur does that. And right. we have to do everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we have, we have so many success stories and artists that have sold you know a ton or gotten picked up by a gallery mm-hmm, or ended mm-hmm. up collaborating with somebody as a result of our showcase that right. led to other opportunities right. so and it's really hard to track we have almost 200,000 artists in our network mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. unless they tell us right and we again we survey them after mm-hmm. every showcase but unless they tell us mm-hmm. or like fill out that survey right. we don't know uh, and sometimes I see it like years later right. like I'm yeah. friends with the artists uh, on Facebook uh-huh. or Instagram and I'm like hey didn't you guys meet at a Robin right. they're like yeah we started a clothing line I was uh, like how come you didn't tell <laughs> you know but I get it they're busy. right 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 <laughs> so do artists do this repeatedly with you or like yeah, it's a one time deal mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. okay that's there, cool we absolutely we have our alumni that we welcome back into mm-hmm. our showcase constantly and how do you manage so many shows across the globe oh my god <laughs> good question <laughs> I mean, how do you keep it consistent that's my question as a business person <laughs> yeah it's really hard well we have a we have a brand book mm-hmm. that um we update on an annual basis that mm-hmm. basically has like this is what the show should look uh-huh. feel like this is how everything should be right. set up mm-hmm. we have showcase directors that adhere to the brand mm-hmm, book mm-hmm. and make sure all of those boxes are checked right um but yeah, it is uh, difficult. When we right. first started, we had independent contractors in mm-hmm, each of mm-hmm. these cities and right. states that we were in. Mm-hmm. And we found it really difficult to mm-hmm. actually control kind mm-hmm. of the product and right. making sure that like the mission was being upheld the mm-hmm. way we wanted it to. So we ended up um, about six years ago, mm-hmm. we moved a bunch of people in house to an office uh, and made them employees and uh, was like, here's right. medical insurance. Here's this. <laughs> We're going to do this. Right. Make right. sure that this is, you know, good right. and sturdy and that you have all the tools and resources right. that you need to succeed. Um, so, yeah. So what are the challenges of having like indep- independent contractor? Because that's kind of versus mm-hmm. like your own employees, because that's kind of like the gig economy right now. Everybody's right. thinking like, I'm just going to have a couple of side gigs, you know, right. and do various things. So what's the difference or what's also the importance of, you know, having a company with all of them in one place? Yeah, I think it's really communication. And mm-hmm. I know that we have like all these online utilities that help with it. Mm-hmm. Um But the communication is so much better when someone is face to face Mm -hmm. than over chat or over Skype or Uh, something like that. You know, if someone chooses not to answer their phone for three days and you have something to talk to them, they could just (laughs) do that. They can just disappear on you. Because they're independent, independent contractor, right? Right. Right. And then you're like, hey, uh, (laughs) we need a chat, you know, short of getting on a plane and like flying to their house. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So that was kind of, and we we work with a lot of younger people and Mm -hmm. some of of them, this is their first real job Mm -hmm. or their first, you know. Right experience doing Mm -hmm. something out of uh, college Mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think it is much better to have your team in house. Mm -hmm. At least for us, it's proven to be. It's a lot more work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to consider. You know, like we have HR now. We have have to have all these things that we didn't necessarily (laughs) need before. So it's more expensive. It's a bigger investment. But it's better for the brand overall right. and mm-hmm. for the showcases and mm-hmm. their quality and for our artists ultimately. And that's what's most important to me is like, I want to make sure that the artist experience is fantastic right? and we can only really manage that and um, maintain that. Mm-hmm. I think if we have the proper team, 
in place in house and they're there if right. we need to so you can hold them accountable right right <laughs> <laughs> i know <Yeah. laughs> i know some of these struggles <laughs> yeah. it's every day right in management like what is what is the most difficult thing in being in management now that you're you know there's 70 people to manage. <laughs> yeah, well, I have managers and then managers under them. But yeah, I think it's, um, I'd have to say everyone has an opinion. Right. And I, <laughs> I love it. And I want to listen to everyone. Right, right. I, that's the hardest part, though. Ah, right. I think it's everyone has an opinion and they don't necessarily uh, see. I'm the only one that sees 360 right. view of the business. Yes, yes. And so I think that makes it difficult right, at right, times. Right, right. You know, they say it's lonely at the top for a yes, reason. It's it is. Because, <laughs> yeah, I know what the bank account looks like. Right, I know what exactly. the employees need. I know what this looks like. Mm-hmm. I know what our artists need. I know all of these things. Right. And so people tend to have opinions and make decisions or right. want to make decisions mm-hmm, or see mm-hmm. something happen from only one side right, of yes, the view. Yes, because and they're so, in only one department. Or right. One, yeah. And so in, and that's no fault to them. Right. It's just that's where right. they see it from. <laughs> so... I think that's the hardest part, really. No, that is. It's like being right there and being like, well, I can't really share this information right. with you, but the mm-hmm. reason I'm making this decision is because of X, Y, and Z that exactly. you can't be a part of. Right. You know? <laughs> so I, I, I think I that's getcha. the hardest part of managing people. Mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. everyone has an opinion. You want to be a good right. boss. You want to listen. But there's like things that they they just can't know. Right. Exactly. So that's, that's <laughs> tough. <laughs> so how do you keep them motivated then? I... Um, I try, uh, we have um, SWAT meetings Mm -hmm. now, Mm -hmm. which is a newer implementation. We have SWAT meetings on a quarterly basis Mm -hmm. where we do kind of have an open forum Mm -hmm. and allow them to, because they do have really great ideas and like allow them to come out and be like, okay, what are our strengths in this department, our Uh, weaknesses, our mm -hmm, opportunities, mm -hmm. our threats, and kind of go through that exercise and practice. Mm -hmm. Um, We also, we make, our showcase is very competitive Mm -hmm. um in in certain ways and i think that helps motivate Mm -hmm, them we mm -hmm. play games and stuff sometimes um but overall i feel like our team is really passionate Mm -hmm. about what we're doing Mm -hmm. and for artists um they're there because they love it there's not a ton of money in it (laughs) (laughs) none of us are here for the money it's because like they really do want to make an impact and Mm -hmm. it's like if you have to go to work eight hours a day or more Mm -hmm. uh you should maybe like what you're doing right you know and i think that's ultimately what it comes down to you know you can go and work anywhere for a higher salary or less hours or whatever but if you don't like what you're doing and you're not fulfilled in that it's it's the trudge every yeah, day. That's you know, true. And it doesn't have to be. And then, so I feel like that's why the majority of our employees are here. Right. That's what they like. Okay. So what kind of culture do you think you created with your company? Like what's your brand mm-hmm. of influence on your company culture? Our company culture is very creative. Oh, nice. Um, every single, we say we're for artists by artists. Uh-huh. Um, Every single employee does something creative. Oh, so nice. they are musicians. We have a ton of musicians. Mm-hmm. We have um, oh, we have writers. We have people who are photographers. Right. We have visual artists, mm-hmm. painters. Mm-hmm. We have so they are coming. I think we've done a really good job of kind of creating a culture of you know casualness mm-hmm. while also. Um, allowing allowing people to follow their own creative path, yeah. mm-hmm. but also making it fun and cool and right, not, right. you know, not too corporate-y. Right. <laughs> That's true, because you are in the creative yeah, field. Yeah, yeah. Which it can swing a little too much that <laughs> That's way sometimes, true. and you That's have to, like, true. bring it back. But. So let's talk a little bit about your book, The sure. Work of Art. So mm-hmm. um, in there, you, I'm sure you're giving lots and lots of tips to yeah. the uh, artists. Can you share some of your your advice that you would give for artists starting out in the business side sure <laughs> yeah so the book is basically a business book for artists mm-hmm. it's called the work of art um and i've worked with creatives and been one myself pretty mm-hmm. much my whole life but um for almost 20 years and i've seen them make lots of little tiny mistakes mm-hmm. that i think if they just slightly skewed the other direction right 
they could have a much different career. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to, after, you know, it was Ra's 10th birthday this year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I have so much to say to this community, especially Mm -hmm. after doing this for 10 years and like going through my own struggles. Right. And I've learned so much, often the hard way. I was like, I got to write this down. (laughs) (laughs) So I started doing that and then it unfolded and Mm -hmm. turned into a book. But, (laughs) um, Essentially, I think the number one thing is creatives need to decide exactly what they want for mm-hmm. their career, mm-hmm. um, because that's often something that's like the the most fundamental first layer that uh, I see is missing mm-hmm. a right. lot of the time. Is they're just like, yep, I create, I like doing this, mm-hmm. but they are just kind of fumbling around and doing uh, different things and right. being disappointed by right. different things right. because they didn't really define what they wanted in the first right, place. Right. And that's when people can feel super lost mm-hmm, and depressed mm-hmm. and right. like over it. You right, know? right, right. Um, so I think that's like the number one thing. But in this book, I cover um, branding, both creative, mm-hmm. your, your creative work and your personal brand. I cover budgeting. I cover investing right. and saving. Mm-hmm. Um Also, how to deal when you get into your more like tougher levels of success, Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that presents a whole nother set of problems (laughs) at every level, (laughs) every level. It's that video game. Right. Right. (laughs) Um, I cover mental health Mm -hmm, also. mm -hmm, Right. That's an that's another important one. I did did some research and it was kind of staggering Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the amount of uh, statistics with kind of creative people Uh and how. We tend to deal with mood disorders and depression Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, so there's, I, um, I interviewed and work, wrote that chapter Mm -hmm. with a clinical psychologist to make sure Mm -hmm. that I wasn't, you know, giving any bad advice. (laughs) I was like, here's a doctor. Here's what she says to do. Dr. Rosie Benedicto. She's awesome. So, um, so yeah, it kind of covers the gamut, I feel, Mm -hmm. but, um, that's kind of the book in a right. nutshell. <laughs> and those no. are some of the advice points. And also, like, the media now makes it seem like it's so easy to raise money. And then if you have a bunch of money, then you can be very successful. Mm-hmm. Now, starting out by on your own, um, you know, with little or no support from anyone else, like, would you advise them to go out and just get a whole bunch of money? Would that even make a difference? Or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So I have a couple things and I have an entire chapter about this too. Um, I think it's really important that you take care of yourself financially mm-hmm. and have a steady income right. of some sort. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. don't quit your day job yet. Yeah. <laughs> like have a plan because right. you, I did that. Right. And you can read about how horrible that right. was. <laughs> Bad idea. Um, there's a lot of personal stories in my uh-huh. book that are just, oh, anyways. Um, no, I think that you should, I think raising capital should be done very thoughtfully mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it should be based on a plan that you have in place. Right. And it doesn't need to be some super crazy, robust business plan, obviously, unless you're like going to a bank mm-hmm. for a loan or something like that. Right, right. Um, but you need to have a plan about how you're going to put that right. back into your business and into your pocket, how you're mm-hmm. going to feed yourself. Right, right. So that's why I say don't quit your day job just like off the bat. Yes. Like have a plan to exit over time. Right, exactly. And exactly. While you do that, you mm-hmm. need to double duty mm-hmm. and you need to get you need to stop, you know, going out every weekend, right. and, you know, spending your nights and weekends mm-hmm. like, you know, at happy hour. Right, like you've got right. to be really cognizant right. again if that's what you want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of things that I recommend, mm-hmm. but the the number one thing that I recommend is like do double duty for a mm-hmm. period of time. Uh. Like even when I was writing this book. What I would do is obviously I work a full time mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. more than full time right. gig. And then I would, I made a, what I call a beast mode mm-hmm, balance mm-hmm, schedule mm-hmm. for yeah. myself. <laughs> Just invented the name. <laughs> um, but essentially I'd come home from work mm-hmm. and then from seven to 11 after mm-hmm. I've had dinner, or right. gone to the gym or did whatever I needed to do from seven to 11 every night mm-hmm. I would write. And I wow. did that for months. Yes. Discipline. Really. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's being, it's being disciplined. Right. And that allowed me to do both of these things um, at the same time. Right. You know, mm-hmm. whereas if I was just like, nope, I'm quitting my job yeah. because, <laughs> which I wouldn't, but like, I'm quitting my job yeah. because I want to write a book. Mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. 
that would be a horrible idea. <laughs> no, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you know, balance those things right. as you go. So I recommend that. The second, I think, second in my list of like best case scenario mm-hmm. for financing is crowdfunding it from your circle. Ah, so mm-hmm. um, there's Kickstarter, there's GoFundMe, there's right. all of those different mm-hmm. platforms. I think that's the second best way to do it because there's no interest. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, your friends and family do want to support you. Right, that's true. And uh, the one caveat that I'll I'll put on that statement, though, is that I've never personally seen that work mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, more than one time. Uh, so, like, okay. make a count. Like, you right. can't do, like, okay, I'm out of money in three months. <laughs> I need to do another round. Right, right, right. You know. Yeah. But um, so I recommend that, too. Like, crowdfunding is mm-hmm. good. Best case scenario, though, save up your own money right. for a period of time right. until it's feasible right. for right. you to do that and sacrifice, like live below your means, mm-hmm. move to a smaller place, get right. your roommate, do what you got to do right. for a period of time, knowing that it has an expiration date mm-hmm. to, you know, move forward. Right. So it's, you know temporary lifestyle to make big gains later. right yeah. all of these great advice is on your <laughs> book so don't forget buy her book yeah <laughs> well thank you Heidi for joining us today and sharing Absolutely. your amazing stories you're so inspirational for all Aww. these women and also you know as as well as all the artists out there um, so please find out more about raw artists okay uh, on rawartists.com and heidiluera.com and follow Heidi and raw um, raw artists artist on um, facebook twitter instagram or wherever social media is av- available <laughs> nowadays <We're everywhere. laughs> yeah. we even have a tiktok right <laughs> <laughs> and then you can buy the book on amazon yes. you can also listen to it right yeah. on audibles that's awesome i love listening to books on audible yeah okay and if you enjoy our podcast today please subscribe and check out our videos on our website, girlinfluencepower.com, or go to our Collectin's YouTube channel. And thank you again for coming on my thank show. You. It's been a pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.